off to another project. Gary is still working on the basement, putting in those Battleborn batteries and the Victron and trying to work on all of the spaghetti mess below. So I decided to update our tank monitoring system to the sea level 2 monitoring system. First, I'm going to show you how I installed the sensor in the black tank that's underneath our dinette. Post uses speaker wire for their sender connections to the display, and we will certainly reuse that instead of creating new ones. No point in doing that. But we will need to get the jumbled mess of wire that's connected to each of the three levels on each tank. We purchased the 709-P3 monitoring system uh, that has three 12 inch senders. We chose to go through the RV upgrade store since they allowed you to swap out a different length senders as you needed it. And for the host cascade, you will need a 16 inch sender for the fresh tank, a 12 inch sender for the gray tank, and a six inch sensor for the black tank. Each of the senders at the top have a little tab that will help the display unit understand which sender is sending information. Pretty simple. Uh, you just cut off the one that um, you're using. Since I'm working on the black tank, I just cut off the black tank tab. As I continued to fondle the black tank, I realized that the very bottom of the tank is actually angled inward, so putting the sensor on there wasn't gonna work. I originally bought a 12 inch sender for the black tank and was planning to trim it down to six inches. I ended up buying another six inch sender to replace the one that I originally purchased. Here is a comparison of the cut down 12 inch sender and the new six inch sender that I bought. With the bottom of the tank angled, uh, we wouldn't be able to use the bottom inch or so of either of the senders. With the length being so short, I decided to get that 6 inch sender to give us a little bit more accuracy. Next, we're going to work on the fresh tank in the basement. I wanted to get this done fairly quickly since I want to get it out of the way of Gary working on the other items. On our way to the fresh tank, you'll see my amazingly awesome job of a cardboard mock-up for the Victron Multi Plus. Boy, it's gonna be tight. The battery cables that you see are from our alternator charging system that was installed by SherpTech. Um, they did a great job of mounting all of those cables and the breaker, but we of course took them down. Similar to the black tank, we're going to cut off the old sender wiring and connect the new sensor to the speaker wire. I ended up moving the sender to the back of the tank. In reality, I probably should have put it closer to where it was originally to stay out of the way, but I was being a little lazy.
Fresh and the gray tank is pretty much the same wiring situation as the black and the fresh tank. Um, the hardest part here was getting those darn wires out of that corrugated tubing and all that black electrical tape. Yuck. On the gray tank, I did have to cut down the sender a little bit in order to fit there nicely. Uh, again, pretty simple as long as you connect, cut it um, between the pads. And now we can take out that old panel and replace it with a new one. One cool thing I found in here was that Host actually put color coding based upon the actual tank. So when you see a blue wire, it's your fresh tank. When you see a gray wire, it's your gray tank. And when you see a brown wire, it's your black tank. We powered up the display and I was able to get a voltage and basic readings for all four of the tanks. I am not planning on using that as uh, reading our voltage on our batteries since those wires are pretty small and we'll be installing a BMV later anyway. I ended up finding these little rubber end caps to use to put over the pointy part of the screw. Uh, it seemed to make sense to me. 